Well, in a minute, we'll be joined by the spokesperson for the Obi Dati uh, campaign organization, who is uh, imminently with us uh, as we speak. But first, as the pace of the race towards Nigeria's 2023 ballot accelerates, the candidates are starting to slam each other in the face of fierce competition for votes, while the ruling APC, as we mentioned at the outset, has launched verbal attacks on the Labour candidate. The PDP has been attacking the APC, the party that dislodged it from power in 2015. And of course, very little of all those attacks have been about policy and the issues. So as we get closer to the wire, are the jibes likely to keep coming thick and fast. Well, for more on that, I'm joined now in the studio by our lead commentators who will give us their analysis of the big political news and issues of the day. And they are the public affairs commentator, Arise News Analyst, and head of mass communications at Bayes University in Abuja, Professor Abiodun Adedi, and by the lawyer, Arise Judiciary Editor and Deputy Director of News, Toby Shodi. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let me come to you, Prof. A race that is still too close to call mm -hmm. in a week in which we've seen allegations from the opposition parties, including the PDP and Labour, casting themselves as the victim of what they claim is an increasingly aggressive ruling APC party. Allegations the APC, of course, denies. What are your reflections on all of that? Well, I think um, we were very concerned at the start of the campaign, you know, that it's going to be issue-based, you know, because um, admonitions were in this direction, because an issue-based campaign can actually be very elevating, and we want to also believe that our democracy is rather growing, and if it is growing, it shouldn't just be in terms of longevity, but in terms of the content and character. And content and character can only manifest in the way the actors play the game, you know, you know, trying to be elevated, you know, mm. trying um, not to fall into the temptation of throwing broadsides, you know, of throwing jibes, uh, of becoming very personal rather than looking at issues, of being uncivil, being discourteous. We expected this to happen, but of course we seem to be witnessing a gradual deviation, you know, from that expectation. Perhaps they are challenging us to manage our expectation. But even if we want to manage our expectation, we would have wanted to manage it in the way in which, you know, we will see issues, issue-oriented or issue-based um, admonitions, issue-based campaign for votes. You know, but I want to also believe that, I want to also uh, believe that it's something that may not be completely inevitable because campaign can become really, really vociferous, really, really frenetic, mm -hmm. and sometimes as human, the, that element in them may want to play up. But the strength of a, uh, of a person is actually defined by how you can uh, manage, how you can contain the temptation you know, to go low, you mm -hmm. know, where you are supposed to stay high, as the case could be. So what we can do in the circumstance is to continue to um, appeal you know, to the principal actors you know, to keep it, um, keep it clean, you know, keep it elegant, uh, keep it robust, you know, face the issues that are bedev bedeviling us and refrain from, from making comments on personalities. Uh, if you want to make comments on personalities, let it be based on maybe some kind of questions that the personalities will have to answer, but not about the things that the person can probably not change, you know. And um, there's a difference between offending person and hurting person. Of any person, are probably uh, things you will do, you know, that the person can easily let go. But when you hurt, it might become unforgettable. Mm -hmm. And any campaign that is full of hot uh, speeches that will hurt, you know, or jabs that will hurt, you know, or hate speeches, then it becomes really inimical, you know, to good progress. And will add little or nothing to the content and character of the campaign of our democracy. Whereas democracy shouldn't just be measured in terms of, you know, dividends, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of longevity. Uh, the value that has been engendered in the process also matter, and that value will come in the attitude of that democratic process. And one way of measuring that attitude is how the kind of orientation, you know, the kind of culture that the actors have imbibed. You mm -hmm. know, so we can we, we, at, the, at the moment we can only continue to appeal, and we right. just hope that 
it will be kept clean going forward. Charles. Okay, um, Toby, I mean, I in a sense, are we setting the bar too high by expecting these candidates, although in an ideal world, that's what you would want to see, by expecting these candidates to be really high up in terms of, you know, not hitting low blows and all that sort of thing. Because, I mean, let's face it, in every campaign, you know, you want to go for, for the jugular. I mean, if you look at Donald Trump, for example, yeah. who's already attacking Ron DeSantis in America, <laughs> and they haven't even started the campaign, and he's, he's just the, the fear that this person might actually challenge me yeah. for the presidential nomination. Yeah, thank you, Charles. I, well, uh, let me start with uh, Simon Kolaole's book. Mm. It is all politics. He's a brilliant writer, isn't yeah, he, Simon? it is all politics. Yeah. But beyond that, I think it's also human nature not to comply with the rules. Mm. World, worldwide, people like to push the rules. So even though there are rules guiding this campaign, mm. in the process to make sure they outdo their opponents, human beings tend to overdo themselves. Absolutely. So, I mean, we, the expectation is not... Uh, we aren't going to lower expectation, but my concern is that institutions that are meant to regulate them seem not to be rising to the occasion. Because like I said, it is human nature mm. to want to breach rules. Most of, most of the time, it's because there are institutions that will punish you for breaching Absolutely. that rules. When those institutions are not doing their job, people do it and get away That's with it. That's a good point. So INEC needs to rise up. NBC, Nigerian Broadcasting uh, Commission has to rise up other regulatory institutions, to, you know, people that need to be fined should be fined. Mm. People that need to be arrested should be arrested and prosecuted. I want to cite the example of the article campaign in Borono being attacked. And the first thing the police, before they even started the investigation, they said it was, said it was not, it was not <laughs> yeah. attack. We are not going to make I remember talking progress. about it with you yesterday, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not fun. You've not even investigated. So how would they not bring somebody to book? So it means that it's still going to continue. But if some people have been arrested as deterrent and prosecuted, next time there is such a campaign, people will exercise restraint. So I expect, like uh, Prof said, that the, the candidates should caution themselves, mm. but they are not going to do so unless they are restrained. That's so we have to point. find a way to restrain them. That's a very good point. And um, those... I mean, talking about the things that have started to come out, yeah. and, and you were talking about the matter of degree, you know, mm -hmm. to what extent are you going to, I mean, you can hit someone mm -hmm. sort of, you know, in the stomach or whatever, but do you want to hit them below the belt? Yeah. Um, those verbal attacks, for mm -hmm. example, on Peter B by Kashim Shatima, the vice presidential candidate of the APC, calling him Gringory, mm -hmm who is a comedic character from a TV series mm, yeah. and in effect trying to ridicule him. Mm. Mr. B's supporters called it unacceptable, reprehensible, but I mean, this is a campaign season, as we mentioned earlier, when candidates hit out at each other. So to that extent, we should be expecting a lot of low blows, shouldn't we? Yeah, you see, but campaign season, but you know, there's this proverb that says that even if you are crying, you can still see. Mm. You know, uh, campaign season does not mean that we should, we don't have our uh, gumptions. We still have them, right? We still have our senses. We can still control ourselves. We can still moderate ourselves, you know. We can still be circumspect, you know, because um, we are com we have a pedigree. And all the politicians have pedigrees, you know. Um, the candidates and their vice presidential candidates, they have pedigrees, you know. So those pedigrees, we expect them to leverage on it and not go beyond, uh, not go below some, some uh, expectations of yeah. standards, you know. So we they need um, to do some introspection as they carry on, you know, because mm -hmm. um, the candidates that you're attacking may not really mind, you may be able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that Peter Obi, for instance, has faced so many kinds of attack, and is uh, oftentimes he seems to have been 
to have handled it very well, you know. But what about his followers? You know, they may not be able to handle it like that. So we have to be fair to ourselves, and of course, you know, mind our languages. You know, and some of these things may be coming on this part of the moment. You know, be, because the onus on us really, as elders, as, as political, as leaders, you know, is to caution ourselves and be restrained so that we we'll not make provocative statements. Very unfortunate uh, that some of them have actually made some statements that you consider provocative, otherwise respectable individuals. You know, and you, this individual shouldn't be the ones leading the degeneration mm -hmm. of the campaign tone. You know, the campaign tone should be kept elegant, should be kept, you know, above the fray, and we do not want to see it declining. You know, in the build up to the election, because this is not going to be good for us, and because we expect that our democracy should grow, like we have said it for the umpteen time, and in growing, really the character should actually grow. And one way in which this character can be showcased in how. Um, we mouth things in, it's in our pronouncements, and it matters really. Issues, the issues are, are, are they come are plenty. Mm -hmm. You know, insecurity is there, joblessness is there, you know, um, oil theft is there, dwindling revenue. You know, what about communications technology that is expanding? We are still far behind. You know, in so many respects, you know, so these things are things that you actually focus upon. And what about illiteracy? You know, you know the fact that the majority of Nigerians are still illiterate. What about overpopulation? That's it. You know, nagging issues that, that should actually concern us. You know, and the people need increased level of sensitization. The kind of sensitization you need to give them is the one that will elevate them, not the one you know, that will make them think, mm. resort to base thinking, thinking that the only way to go is to attack the other one. That's um, really um, um, primitive, and I uh, want to hope that our politicians will look away from, the, from this. Yeah, but in fairness to um, Mr. Shatima, mm -hmm. he, he was talking, wasn't he, in the context of um, accusing Peter B of spewing um, dubious, uh, dubious statistics, and, and I suppose it's in that context that he talked about him as a joker, but... I mean, in, in these kinds mm. of things, people get very sensitive yeah, yeah, you know, about you, things. Maybe before you come to, you know, statements can actually be very loaded, very yeah. pregnant. Shetima is a very brilliant person. Mm. He can circumscribe the meanings that he wants to put across yeah. in different, um, you know, in, in different tone. But Without it's it also, suggesting anything right. inflammatory. But you should also remember right. that the populace are also uh, not dunces. Yes, they can yes. read, read through trends and expand, give you different kinds of mm. interpretation. So, so, but our pronouncement shouldn't be one, shouldn't be those that can be given very dangerous interpretation. Yes, I, I think that's a good point. Yeah. And, and Toby, let's go beyond the sort of the, you know, the uh, allegations against people and so on, and look at the political landscape at the moment what do you see i mean I, in terms of for example if they're to i mean the polls so far if they're to be believed um what what sense is it giving us of, of how this race is going to aso rock well before i go to that mm. what i see and my fear is uh, insecurity is going to Largely affect the result of this election, and that's a very good point. And because that can make now, now that you mention it, yeah. let me mention quickly that the Electoral Commission, INEC, I'm sure you're aware of this, warned today that violence linked to next year's presidential vote is on the increase. It said the attacks had happened in the first uh, month of uh, 50 attacks had happened in the first month of campaigning. Please go on. Yeah. So it's giving a warning, basically. Yeah, because that yeah. can make uh, a mockery of some of these mm. uh, opinion polls and what have you. I'm not sure people conducting the polls are giving due credence to what uh, this level of uh, insecurity can do. Mm. There are some local government that are not accessible. So what happened there? If majority of your voters are concentrated in that area, mm. because those polls assume that election we hold everywhere. So beyond insecurity, other issues are ability to bring out your people to come and vote. Because it's not enough, you know, everybody is going to get crowd. Mm. If you go to labor rally, you see crowd. You go to PDP, you see crowd. But sometimes the same people that come for this rally come for the other. <laughs> and that is the thing. So if yeah. you base your calculation projection on the crowd, you may still be making a mistake. Absolutely. So it is whoever is able to bring his own people out on that day. And so, I mean, that's part of the fear that I have for, mm. I mean, like the OB campaign, for instance. 
You know, there are people who are a bit elitist, and the electoral system can be very frustrating. Mm. You can queue for three hours, and they'll say the machine is not working. I mean, will they be able to stand for that three hours, four hours, five That's a hours, very good point. and see to it? If they are able to do so, mm. I'm sure they will be able to pull their weight mm. in terms of results. But, you know, for PDP, APC, they have traditional voters that come rain and shine. They are not going to leave that place. Yes. And that is an advantage to them. So the big group will have to keep on telling people that no matter what they bring, stay there mm. and see it through. So this is going, these are some of the factors that are likely to affect the outcome of mm. the result, not the rally, I mean, the crowd we are seeing at the rally now. That's a very good point. Let me come to you, Prof. Are we getting a better sense of who's got what base in the electorate? For instance, are we seeing more urban youths and women supporting P. Toby, the business community split between Atiku and Tinubu, a lot of rural people, particularly in the north, going for Kwan Kwaso, or is it all still a muddle <laughs> and hard to be clear on who's mm. supporting whom? But that's a very brilliant uh, perspective, you know, that is coming like a question, you know. Mm. And some of these devices are actually very, very interesting. And I wish we were developed enough, enough like the United States, for mm. instance, to be able to design, you know, these demographics, you know, as early as possible. It is still the problem modeled up, like you said, in our own uh, crime, you know, because our census uh, figures are very poor. Everything is still about projections. And of course, we're even still relying on, you know, foreign multinational, multilateral agencies to help us do it. You know, so we may not be able to place a hand on these democratic graphics. Uh, this device, you know, these cli classifiers, but it's a good thing that we're beginning to look at them. Mm. Why, are we, why are we not beginning to look at them? Because of the um, intervention of the Labour Party through Peter Obi, that's why we, it, it has become even more interesting for us. If it was a two-horse race between the PDP and the APC, by now it would have been easier for us to make projection mm. on who's going to win. But now, you know, the picture is, has become unclear because of Labour Party. Yeah, but, but don't forget we, the NNPP as well. Yeah, well, well the NNPP They're is there. They're spoilers as well. Yeah, they, Let's they, face. But they are, they are, I'm sorry, with the greatest respect to them, mm. I haven't seen them beyond Kano just yet. You know, I haven't seen them. There. And that one can is even still uh, questionable. Sometimes they don't want to hear this, you know, but that's my own opinion mm. anyway. I haven't seen them beyond Kano, and Kano is also uh, still very contentious. The uh, incumbent governor is APC. Uh, there's a very strong man in PDP as well. So you could see, you know, that a lot of people will be trying to mm. grab things from Kano. So that's why I'm probably not mentioning them. Greatest respect to them and to their uh, flag bearer. But, you know, with PDP, APC, Labour Party, you know, it is still too close to call. There are still so many issues that we have to deal with. You know, but again, we cannot make the call today. Mm. We have to wait until another one, two, three, or even after the elections before we can become very, very definitive, Charles. Okay. A final word from you, uh, Toby, before we have to go. Well, like you said, it's too early to call, mm. but then we are beginning to see signs of what can happen. You know, the OB is pushing, and uh, anybody that underestimates him does so at his own peril. And it's, uh, well, that's why the parties are launching attacks, aren't they? <laughs> uh, well, somehow I mean, they are helping. It's a sort of recognition are that are you are a formidable campaign. opponent. Yeah, I mean, they know that there's something in him. That's yeah. why they're attacking him. So they may be helping him on the long run. Yeah. So as we go further, I, I, I will insist that Regulatory institutions should do their job. The candidates should also be civil in their approach. Mm. They, I mean, they should avoid less, uh, I mean, they should ad adopt less confrontational approach. And uh, let us end as I start. It is all politics. Now they are still going politics. to be friends after the election. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. On that note, I want to thank you very much indeed. Toby Shoni is a RISE Judiciary Direct Editor. Deputy Director of News is also a lawyer. And of course, uh, Professor Abildun Adeni is Public Affairs Commentator, a RISE News Analyst and Head of Mass Communications at Bayes University in Abuja. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. My pleasure.